Hey guys, and welcome back to Brick System Brothers. Today I am doing the video for the PAB haul, um, getting that converted to rebrickable as a parts list. The first step here is actually doing the counting and getting the original number of parts and just doing that by hand. It's kind of how I do everything. There are potentially some automatic sorting options on the horizon. Uh, I actually want to do a deeper dive on that in a separate topic, but as it stands, counting things out by hand, kind of the fastest option right now. And for a small PAB cup, it's going to be what, 10 minutes tops to get everything. I guess it, it does depend a little bit how many different lots you have. This particular haul, nine different lots, some of the larger pieces that going really quickly. And then probably the hardest thing here is just getting those two dark green differentiated, um, very similar pieces, basically a left and a right side um, with that same profile on there. So getting those all counted out, noting that down. And now the next thing I'm gonna do here is load up my color table, which I have gone into detail recently about this. The other thing I'm gonna do is get a little notepad window opened up. And these are the basic tools for doing the comma separated value um, upload. There are options for doing things piece by piece directly in the website. I've done a separate topic about this today focusing on the functionality of doing this method. Um, I think the strong point of this method is, does suit this lot well because I have a low lot count with relative high piece counts in each lot and just going to demonstrate with the parts from this PAB haul. First thing we want to do in this notepad, any text file actually, um, I think you can even do this in Excel and then export it as a CSV. Um, you might not even have to do that because Rubricable might take Excel now. I haven't actually checked, I've just always done the CSV method. We want to put in our headers. Um, you can name the, the notepad file, name this text file something descriptive. Um, but don't put anything like like that in the file itself because as soon as the program reads, as soon as Rubricable reads here, it's looking for headers, not anything else. So the headers are going to be part, comma, color, comma, quantity, enter. And what that's saying is my columns are going to always follow this order. I'm going to put in the part ID, followed by the color, followed by the quantity, and every unique item is on a new line. Pretty straightforward. The part ID is the uh, part, the number that's molded on the part, and every modern piece has this, should be able to find it um, somewhat easily. Older parts, you're going to have to do some tracking down. Sometimes older parts don't have this molded on, um, but there's pretty comprehensive information in Rubricable in terms of finding these part IDs. Uh, today I have them all, I got them right off the pieces as I did the counting. The first one I'm going to do is the 13731. This is the one by 10 dark blue curve slope. And now it's time to reference my color table. And basically, Rubricable has a unique number for every color in the database. Um, the way that I have this set up, it has the chromatic kind of row by row, and then column by column is color families. So I'm going to go to the blue row, to the dark family, and we have the 272 ID right there, comma, and quantity had this counted at 16. So there's an entry right there. Enter and do the next one. Um, and that's how it's gonna go for this process. So if you have a bunch of the same part, you can actually just copy and paste this number and then paste that in, change your color every time. And this is where it might be handy to do it in Excel where you can just click and drag that down. I only have nine different lots and they're all different so I'm not gonna bother with that. Next one up is 42918. This is a white piece so I'm gonna put in the 15 and had 10 of these. Um, the color ID in most cases is unique to Rebrickable. They have their own IDs for colors. 
There are a few that they've used the same number that LEGO is using, but for the most part, Rebrickable is the only one using these. It's only going to give you the right color in your parts list if you use Rebrickable's ID, which is one of the main reasons I built this chart, is so that I could have an in-window reference for doing this process. 76 quantity and the 3622 1x3 brick in white with 20. And that's it. I'm going to save this, close it out, lose the color chart, start a new parts list in Rebrickable. We've got St. Louis Pab. Now I'm going to use the import and basically just drag this file in. It's going to recognize the CSV, click append, it's going to do the import found 275 pieces. It's a good idea to double check your number beforehand so you know what to expect. And right off the bat I have made an error. It's pulling in a 93609 robot arm instead of my yellow 2x4 curve. Alright, it's easy enough to fix. That should be this guy right here. Just scroll till I find it here. This is the guy I'm looking for, 93606. So I misread the last digit. Now, instead of going back to edit my text file, I'm going to do this directly in Rebrickable. The first tab is the Add to Part List Inventory option. It sorts your color usage by times used. Go to yellow, enter the quantity right here, and choose the list. Add the part. All right, let's go back to that list and take out the arm. It's no longer part of the program. And there we have all of the pieces I bought at St. Louis organized in a new rubricable list. From here, I can break it down. Uh, just sort them into my relative categories, uh, but also have an independent reference of which pieces specifically came from St. Louis. And I think getting this process streamlined makes a bigger difference when you're doing a lot more parts, especially if you're going through a single category. Like say I was trying to go through some bricks and I was just looking at some one buys and two buys. Um, in that case, I'm gonna have a lot of the same type of part, a lot of two by twos, a lot of two by fours. So the part number is gonna be the same for maybe 10 to 20 different colors of that part. And really the only thing I need to change is the color code and the quantity. Um, I think when it comes to that, the other, the other thing that you do that I've always done before I did the um, CSV is your simple direct add with the drop down list. And so this is where you can eliminate some time is scrolling the drop down list hunting for one color out of the 20 common colors out of the 200 some in the database. Um, that's where that time gets eliminated by streamlining the color and quantity selection. I think part identification, you're not really gaining any time here because it's the same process of entering a part ID. Um, but scrolling the color list and changing quantity every time in these boxes, um, in addition to waiting for that part to add after you uh, do every piece. So that should be able to reduce some upload time. Um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show here. And this text-based operation, get this changed over for record keeping. Um, definitely doesn't take up a lot of size to do these. I mean, it's three columns couple characters in each row so you could go tens of thousands of rows before you're looking at a super large file and um, at that point that's kind of a serious time investment into cataloging Lego parts so yeah you're not really limited by file size here um, and I, I am going to look into the Excel options for getting this even more um, yeah just 
see if this will take an Excel file rather than a text file. It probably will. And if it doesn't, you can export Excel as CSV. Yeah. Good stuff. Look at that another day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers.